Hi guys. I don't know if it's better to kill this one. Yeah. So, I got this request on YouTube. I love the requests. It's fucking amazing. So, twin charge setups using a supercharger and a turbo on the same engine. That's really fucking interesting. And there are two ways of setting it up, I would say. You can do it in other ways, but yeah, let's talk three ways. Let's talk three ways. So, first of all, you have to know how much your supercharger can boost. And if you're using a heat on, no, I mean heat on. Uh, if you're using a heat on supercharger, like the normal M62, uh, M90, M1, like the go-to superchargers on the scrapyard if you live in in America they can only handle one bar of boost you can boost a little bit more but as as uh, soon as you surpass one bar you're gonna get a lot of hot air and you will also squeeze the I don't know what it's called in English, the rollers, the fucking supercharger things towards each other so they will start, you know, making a little bit of noise and they will not last very long. So one bar is the maximum go-to boost, it's 14 psi on an Eton M62, M90 or M112 supercharger. And they are super cheap, I mean you, you can buy an M62 or an M90 for $100 or, or $200 is like they cost nothing. So cheap, efficient, good superchargers and you don't really need more than one bar so they are good. There are other superchargers and they you can run without the turbo. A supercharger that can boost two bars or two and a half bar, uh, bar is sufficient for most people's power setups on its own but that's what not what we're talking about today right so twin charge setup supercharger and turbo in a beautiful symbiosis of power you see i don't swear so much anymore because everybody was bashing me about it so fuck you uh, So how do you do it? Let's take the wrong way first. The wrong way. Yeah, whatever. This is not how you set it up. If you put your boost, sh charge air from your turbo through your supercharger. And you think that's a really good idea because you have your air filter on your turbo and it's very easy to set up and you can more or less bolt the supercharger to your intake and happy days not gonna work because the supercharger will consume more power than you gain as soon as it starts compounding because it will be compound setup you are first boosting with your supercharger and get the engine going that will spin up the turbo and the turbo will put the charge air through the supercharger and the supercharger will try to compress that once more. That's compounding. And that will not work. My friend, we hate your fucking friends. And their cars doesn't work. So that's the wrong way to do it. Don't do that, please. So we have two ways that works. One... It's always like this, you know, one way is a little bit more complicated, but gives you a better, it's a better setup, you know, and then you have the easy way and that works as well. So one way to do it is to boost your supercharger through your turbo because your supercharger will only boost maximum one bar. So that will not boost when the turbo is, is going so that means you're not compounding through the turbo and that's good uh, what people do is they use what what we're gonna call it in english 
some kind of diverter valve and we use this in both setups but let's take this first so you have two inlets to your turbo one inlet is coming from the supercharger and then the other inlet is closed by a flap valve and when the supercharger don't want to boost more the turbo will suck through the other inlet and the flap valve will, will open so it will get its own air non-restricted air and that works that works really good it's it works really good I don't want to do do it like that but I have good friends that have run for years with their cars like this and it works really good so you, you only have to think about not overspinning your supercharger not pushing hot air through your supercharger and so on so it has to be like it has to stop boosting when you want it to stop boosting and most superchargers m62 from the mercedes don't have a wastegate ish valve but but a normal m90 has and so on normal supercharger has so that valve is just set to the boost you want and after that it opens and the supercharger will only spin and nothing happens so so that's more or less what you're going to do that works other setup is a normal turbo setup your turbo goes through your intercooler and intercooler goes to your intake but the intake has two inlets instead of the turbo in the first setup and it's exactly the same you know so one inlet has a small water air intercooler and the supercharger is blowing through it it works exactly the same but you don't have to mess with the turbo when the turbo kicks in the boost from the turbo will move the flap and it will be non-restrictive turbo boost into your inlet i don't know if you get this i hope you do it's in my mind it's so fucking simple but it's hard to to make you understand it at times but that's the two ways to do it correctly and i think the other one is easier but it has to be so this is the complicated bit it has to be uh, what do you call it sealed it has to be you know it can't leak any boost because the turbo is is boosting your two and a half three bars of boost and and that need to go pressurized to your inlet so if your diverter valve for the supercharger is leaking air you're gonna have a little bit of a problem of course with overspinning the turbo perhaps and you know not achieving the boost you want etc so that makes it a little bit more complicated in the first setup it's just a fucking piece of cardboard no it's not but it, you know it, it doesn't really fucking matter because the air is just going into the turbo and where it comes from doesn't matter but in that way in the other option it has to be tight and sealed and good quality shit that's about it you know so how do we twin charge our om60456 like this this is how you do it you have one way you don't do it you don't boost turbo boost through your supercharger that is what you're not doing the other ways two other ways is fucking similar just one is a little bit better but more complicated anything else we need to know about this yeah how do you fuck do you test because you don't know how much air your engine consumes so you need to set up your supercharger and that's this is gonna require five different fucking pulleys for your crank or your supercharger wherever you fuck you change them and see now i swear yes because i said it in the beginning I never learn so you have to first run your car with a supercharger only and you see that you achieve the boost you want like 0 0.9 bars you're keeping you below your one bar threshold but you're not boosting too little 
maybe your setup only requires half a boost, uh, half a bar of boost, you know? So just try it out and see how it works. And that's about it. Yes, not much to it. It's very, very simple and it's giving you a lot of satisfaction. My friends that are running supercharger and turbos, they, I think they will never go back to anything else. So, I mean, sequential turbos, compound turbos, yeah, it's easier because you don't have a belt and tensioner and brackets and stuff like that. But, you know, it requires other mods. So, I think you should think about this. And not only for the 60456 guys, this is something that will wake up your older engine if you have a 601 203 you know you have a little less natural aspirated power it's a little bit harder to get that turbo spooling it's a it's it's super f fucking great engines and i love them but they are lacking a little bit on the power that the 604 5 and 6 has so this setup is something Maybe US based diesel companies should think about how can I CAD one amazing fucking M90 bracket up for the 603s? I don't know. We'll see what happens. So that's all for today. 12 minutes is enough for a good video, and I hope you get the twin charge setup theories. I love you and see you in, uh, I don't know, two months. Bye.